Hello my dear students. So here I am going to just explain one sample gate question. It was asked in the year gate uh, 2018. Just go through this uh, DC to DC converter shown in the figure. Okay. What do you understand from this question? So this is actually a DC to DC converter. So DC to DC converter. So a DC to DC converter is shown in the figure. It is charging a battery bank B2. So it is charging a battery bank B2 whose voltage is constant at 150 volts. Battery 1 is another battery bank whose voltage is constant at 50 volts. Okay, so that means this is our uh, supply voltage. This is our output voltage of the converter. The value of the inductor is 5 milli Henry and the switch is ideal operating with a switching speed of 5 kilohertz and with a duty ratio alpha is equal to 0.4. Since the circuit has attained steady state, see here circuit has already attained steady state. Assuming diode to be ideal, what is the power transferred from battery 1 to battery 2? So what is the question here? How much power is transferred? See here, how much power is transferred from battery 1 to battery 2? So we have to calculate the power. So this is 50 volts. So this is a low voltage side. This is high voltage side. See what is the concept here? The power flows from low voltage side to high voltage side. So that means this is the concept of a boost converter. I hope you understood. So this is the concept of a boost converter. So just see here. So that is the concept of a boost converter. So first we have to identify the converter. Examination, they may not explain whether it is boost or buck. Observing the diagram, we have to understand whether it is boost or buck. So here, power flows from low voltage side to high voltage side. So that is the concept of a boost converter. Now, given what is the output voltage here? Output voltage, 150 volts. So this is actually given in the problem. This is actually given in the problem. Now in boost converter, what is the expression for average output voltage? Here, the expression for average output voltage is Vs by 1 minus alpha, where alpha is the duty ratio of the switch. So this expression is applicable when the inductive current is either continuous or at the boundary. Or at the boundary. So I hope you understood, right? So this expression is applicable to find out the average output voltage in the case of a boost converter when the inductive current is either continuous or at the boundary. Suppose, let us check whether it is uh, true or not. Calculate the value of Vs by 1 minus alpha. What is the supply voltage here? It is actually 50 volts by 1 minus, what is the duty ratio of the switch here? Yes, 0.4. So duty ratio of the switch is 0 0.4. So 1 minus 0 0.4. So 50 by 0 0.6. So that comes around 83.3 volts. What is your observation here? The given output voltage is 150 volts. See there? So what is your observation? So therefore, the given average voltage is 150 <coughs> and this value is <coughs> greater than the value of Vs by 1 minus alpha. So what is your observation dear students? If average output voltage is same as Vs by 1 minus alpha, then it is either continuous or at the boundary. But in our problem, given average voltage is at the output 150 and that is more than the value of Vs by 1 minus alpha. So if given average output voltage is more than the value of Vs by 1 minus alpha, then inductive current is discontinuous. So therefore, 
therefore inductive current is discontinuous inductive current is discontinuous i hope you understood that means in dc to dc converter some data will be given either directly or indirectly first we have to cross examine whether it is continuous or discontinuous so in this numerical inductive current is discontinuous here inductive current is same as supply current i want to calculate the power transferred what is the power transferred in this case tell me see the circuit diagram inductive current is same as the supply current power transfer means i can write vs into is that means to calculate the power transferred we have to find out the average value of source current that is same as average value of inductor current in boost converter inductor current and source current are same so for discontinuous conduction first of all let us draw the il waveform yes so let us draw this il waveform for discontinuous conduction so look here i want to draw the il waveform just for getting more clarity regarding the concept so i want to draw il waveform for discontinuous case of course il waveform is same as supply current in the case of boost converter okay so now let us see the circuit diagram and draw the waveform in the first mode what happens when the switch is turned on here yes tell me see in the first mode the switch is turned on this is the first mode so when the switch is turned on inductor is directly connected to the supply voltage that means voltage across the inductor is constant whenever voltage across the inductor is constant inductive current increases linearly so inductive current increases linearly i hope you understand so voltage across the inductor is constant here so inductive current increases linearly now what happens when i disconnect the switch in this case see here what happens when i disconnect the switch in this case when i disconnect the switch in this case second mode inductive current releases energy to the output that means in the next mode inductor is releasing energy and supplying power to the output so this is actually the second mode so in the second mode the diode starts conducting okay so in the second mode since l is releasing energy inductive current decreases linearly so let us see what is the duration of first mode here duration of first mode is t on this is extinction time tx so let us write in the first mode switch is in the on state second mode the diode is in the on state the duration of first mode is alpha into time period the duration of first mode alpha into time period alpha is the duty ratio it is t on by time period now the duration of second mode is alpha 1 into time period duration of second mode alpha 1 into time period i hope you understood when diode is conducting so here tx what is the value of tx here i can define beta is equal to extinction time tx by t what is the meaning of extinction time so when inductor releases the entire energy inductive current becomes zero when inductive current becomes zero immediately the diode stops conducting okay so that duration is this is beta into t see tx is equal to from this beta into t so from this expression you can say alpha into t plus alpha 1 into t is equal to beta into t so from this you can write beta is equal to alpha plus alpha 1 after that in the last mode when inductance releases the entire energy so when energy becomes zero inductive current becomes zero when inductive current becomes zero so that is the last mode discontinuous interval so that is one cycle so this is actually the discontinuous interval this is actually the discontinuous interval now what is the peak value of inductive current in this case what is the peak value of inductive current here so you can see here this is actually the ripple current delta il the peak value of inductive current 
now i want to find out the to calculate the power i have to find average value of supply current that is nothing but average value of inductor current how to find average value of inductor current average value means average value of inductive current means area of the triangle no so find the area of the triangle divide by total time period area by time period gives average value so i want to find average inductor current that is same as average supply current okay average inductor current same as average supply current so area of the wave form area of the wave form whole divided by time period so what is the area of this triangle here area of this triangle half into area of the triangle half into so what is the base length of the triangle the base length of the triangle it is beta into t see from here to here i mean see this length is this length is beta into t so half into base length of the triangle is beta into t height of the triangle is ripple that is delta l height of the triangle is delta l ripple divided by total time period so with this what is the expression we get what is the expression we get for ripple current so ripple current il il average or supply current average half into beta into ripple so to find out the il average or supply current we have to find out the extinction this beta so how beta is related beta is related with what parameters see you know for discontinuous conduction what is the expression for average voltage for discontinuous conduction tell me what is the expression for average voltage when it is discontinuous so look here all of you so when it is discontinuous average voltage is equal to beta into vs by beta minus alpha see this is the expression for average voltage in terms of alpha beta and supply voltage so this formula is applicable only when il waveform is discontinuous this formula is applicable only when il waveform is discontinuous okay so here beta value is unknown parameter here now given v not output voltage is 150 volts beta is unknown value supply voltage is 50 by beta minus alpha is 0.4 so calculate the value of beta so beta is unknown value in this case make it fast so just calculate the value of beta calculate the value of beta so can you tell me what is the value of beta here yes 0.6 so beta value is 0.6 so see here for discontinuous conduction beta value is less than 1 of course it is less than 1 only next we have to find out the ripple see here what is ripple current in the case of boost converter alpha vs by fl i hope you know remember this formula the ripple in the inductive current when it is discontinuous it is alpha vs by fl so what is the duty ratio in this case duty ratio duty ratio 0.4 into supply voltage is 50 divided by can you tell me what is the frequency here see in this problem uh frequency 5 kilohertz and inductance 5 milli so frequency 5 kilohertz so frequency is 5 kilohertz and inductance is 5 milli 5 milli okay so i think you will get 0.8 amperes so ripple in the inductive current is 0.8 amperes okay so 0.8 amperes okay 
so now you know the ripple in the inductive current you know the beta value now calculate this il average here so il average equals to half into beta value 0.6 into I, uh, delta l is 0 0.8 0 0.8 so that comes to be 0.24 amperes so il average supply current average 0.24 amperes understood now we have to find out the power transferred by the supply right so power transferred is vs into is so vs is 50 volts is is 0.24 so power transferred is equal to 12 watts i hope the concept is clear so just let me summarize this one here just let me summarize this one here so here first we have to identify what is the converter so power flows from low voltage side to high voltage side means it should be a bush converter examiner is asking power power means we can simply say vs into is okay now given average voltage is 150 this expression is applicable for continuous conduction or at the boundary when you calculate this value we got 83.3 but given average output is 150 that is more than this value so therefore il is discontinuous then i draw the waveform for discontinuous case in first mode and second mode and then after drawing the waveform i want to find average value area of the triangle by time period then finally we got this expression okay so finally calculate the value of beta by using this expression Calculate the ripple current. We have to remember this formula. Ripple current for bush converter. So now substituting here, we have calculated finally the power transferred. So power transferred is 12 watts from 50 volts battery to 150 volts battery. Right students? So here normally what is the mistake people will do? So people will not identify whether it is continuous or discontinuous by default they will take continuous conduction and they will remember the formulas of continuous conduction unfortunately that type of mistakes they have to do they will do so that is why gate examination the question seems to be more complicated but when you understand the concept properly okay definitely it will be very simple okay so gate questions seems to be more tough but when you understand the concept in a proper way and when you understand the question in a proper way then it will be very simple right students thank you